Hi, welcome to In a Pickle Knitting. My name is Donna and this is a podcast about knitting and today some sewing. This is episode 20 in which Annie learns to knit and today we will be having some finished objects, some works in progress, our fiber related children's literature book and um, lots of thank yous and um, get our uh, knit alongs, make alongs and some prizes to give away. So join me as we get started with finished objects. The first finished object I have for you today is a really quick project. I watched the Knit Girls, it's one of my um, favorite podcasts and they have um, a project going on in conjunction with the Fiber Seed Yarn Dyers and um, there's three different podcasts that are being featured with a special colorway that's been dyed for each of them. And th this is the colorway for the Knit Girls. And here is their label. This comes in a variety of weights. I ordered the worsted weight, so the Fiber Seed Sprout Worsted Weight. And the colorway right now just has the name The Knit Girls. Um, what's happening is that whichever yarn sells the most, then the Fiber Seed Company is going to make a contribution to the charity of their choice. So the Knit Girls are sponsoring PetSmart. Um, one of the others is a, a little bean, maybe. I might have that wrong, but I'll put it down below. And I know that's for breast cancer. And the Knit More Girls from the audio podcast, theirs is sponsoring um, a rescue organization. Um, I forgot the name too. I'll put that below. But anyway, that's the object. So I wanted to help support them and um, with the yarn purchase. And I ordered the worsted weight because I wanted to make a hat. Now they have two patterns that go along with this. One is for a cowl and the other is for a hat. And the point of this yarn is to intentionally pool the yarn. Well, um, I did buy the hat pattern. It's called the depth hat, I believe. I'll put the name down here again. And, um, but I decided that this was a hat I wanted to make for my grandson and I really wanted there to be ribbing around the bottom because I thought I, it was going to be big so I wanted it to fit and um, so I just made my own pattern and I managed to get it to do some of the intentional pooling. So here is where it pools in two different places with the variegated part and two different places with the main color. And um, of course then the way that hat is designed, you continue to have the same intentional pooling through the top because it's not um, drawn in together with um, decreases. It's uh, finished a different way, has a different look. But I did just want that kind of closed up. So I think that looks all right, um, even though it's, uh, you know, bit into that area, it is the, the crown. And um, it actually fits him. He has a rather large head, he's just turned three, but he has a big head and um, so the way you achieve this is through adjusting tension and you can do that by either pulling tighter or more loosely on your when you tension your yarn or you can change needle size and I did both, more of the changing needle size. So I used a seven, eight, and nine and a seven very, very little. So this is um, a hat. So that's my first finished object. Actually, let me show you the pattern and um, the hat done from this yarn. It's called the Depth Hat. And you can see there that uh, this is done in the same yarn and that the pooling goes um, then all the way through the top. And let me see, there, there's a picture in a different colorway. So it's a slouchy hat. It doesn't have that ribbed edge, which I wanted. So, um, oh, and here is another colorway. I love that with the black with the rainbow. It's just gorgeous. So that shows you the top of the hat and the different finish to it. So that, um, again, is my first finished object. Now let's go on to this. Let's go on to the second. So my second finished object is one that I showed you last time where I had finished one of the slippers. These are the Saki slippers and I've got to get these off in the mail to my dad this week for it because they are for Father's Day. So, um, Here's the first one that I showed you. And then the second one, I have sewn the leather patches on the bottom, which I mentioned the last time that I talked to you. And I have not sewn 
um, the patch on the second slipper. Because I'm largely not enjoying it, because I, th I would, wouldn't mind it at all if I just had one of those foot forms that fit this perfectly so I could slide the slipper into it and have something hard and three-dimensional behind it. Eventually, I put it on a sock blocker sideways, and in fact, I think I used the top part of the sock blocker instead of the bottom. That still was a struggle for me. So um, I love the patches, but I wish I had a, a better method of getting them on. I will show you too. I used this stitch, and I think this um, stitch, putting them on, probably used a little bit more of the provided thread than it, I should have because I don't have quite enough for the second one. But I did, when I purchased these, I did buy two packages. So this is the men's package. And I will just take this one out. And when I use these, I'll just use a totally different um, yarn. I'll find something that'll work uh, and be strong. Probably uh, maybe one of those sock reinforcing um, nylon threads that might be strong to hold it onto the bottom. But these are, really are nice and I wanted to show you where I got them from. It's from Lavender Hill Knits and I ordered them on Etsy. And so here is their card and I'm very pleased with um, what I got and I think that's going to really make that slipper last a long time. Now I've just got to go sew the other patch on the bottom. So that's my second finished object. Let's move on to the third. Um, my third finished object is a pair of socks that um, I had already finished one and um, I have now finished the second one. These socks were knit by with a sock blank and you'll see I still have quite a bit left after making two regular women's socks. There's still quite a bit. I think uh, enough to do uh, definitely a pair of shorty socks. I did use the contrast yarn that uh, came with this um, in this peach color um, and so that made of course the sock blank go even farther. I would have to get a different um, one because I have very little of this remaining. It's on the floor right now so I'm not going to bend down and get it. I dropped it all. But this sock blank is from Andre Sue Knits and um, the mini was from her as well. So I just did a two by two rib vanilla sock, afterthought heel and a regular wedge toe. And um, I don't remember how many stitches I cast on nor the needles that I used. Probably I, I think these were a one. Uh, but all that information can be found on my project page of which I have one for almost everything. So that's a finished pair of socks. And my next finished object is another finished pair of socks. And these are my beam, uh, no, glow away socks. And I did not do a contrast. I just used the straight self-striping yarn and they came out pretty close. You know, I, I go to a lot of trouble to start them exactly the same place. Um, when I start this, I always um, pull back and measure exactly where I start my long tail cast on. I, I use the um, old Norwegian cast on, but that's a long tail cast on. And I start them at the exact same place, but you know, sometimes just something, I'm, I think these were knit two at a time as well, so they should have been pretty close, but they are pretty close. Afterthought heel again, two by two ribbon. Um, I think I did a rounded toe on this pair. And this is, this yarn here, this is what I have left over, and I can't pronounce that, but I will leave a link to it. I'll put links for anything that I show down below um, the YouTube video, so you should be able to just click on the little down bar and um, go straight off to anything that uh, I've put in there. So that is my last finished object for knitting this time. So let's move on to works in progress, and as just finished with two socks. I'll start with a pair of socks and I am keeping this in my library card bag and this is from the Silver Shed and that's an Etsy shop too, the Silver Shed USA and um, this is a nice bag for when you're doing two at a time because it's, it's pretty much just the right size. So I have never knit with Knit Picks Felici yarn as such. I think I've knit with the base. 
I did order some bare yarn from Knit Picks in the same, um, it was fingering weight in the same percentages of um, nylon and wool. And it feels very much the same. So I think I have knit with it, but not any that was dyed. So this is um, called Goth Kitty. And um, I did a contrast cuff. I'm not cuff, not the cuff, and I'm not going to do the toe, but I did do the heel in a contrast because I wanted to maintain the stripes. And I also, I didn't want to do an afterthought heel on this pair. I was going to do the heel flap and gusset. So I had this mini, which is from Mothy and the Squid. It came in a rainbow um, mini skein set. I think there were nine or 10 different mini skeins about 30, 25, 30 grams each. And this was the closest color. It doesn't match, but I did think it coordinated. These, this purple here is not, is showing up darker than it, maybe not darker, I don't know. But anyway, I thought it, it blended all right with the socks. So the reason they're puffy is that when I store them in my bag, I shove the yarn up inside. It keeps it from getting tangled up. But you might be able to see them better if I don't have that in there. I like knitting with this yarn. It is very soft. It's a plump. It feels good. Um, I've heard lots of other people talk about knitting with it. That's why I wanted to give the socks a try. Um, I knew it would feel great to knit with, but I want to give them a try for wearing and, and see how they wear because they're very, very soft. Um, so I'm really excited. I've, I'm starting down. I have finished the gusset decreases and I'm starting down the foot. So that's where I am. These ought to be finished pretty soon. And here is the ball band knit picks. Um, it's a special reserve and it says goth kitty. And there's the number 21335. I'm assuming that is, but I know that they don't repeat these colors. So, um, or at least that's what I've heard. I've heard other people say that, and right now knit picks or at least as of day before yesterday, they don't have any um, of the Felici, the self-striping. But I haven't had any problem with my stripes. The, there's three gray colors and two of the grays are pretty close together and I have heard that mentioned by other people. So that's a work in progress. Now let's move to my next work in progress. If you've watched the podcast for a while, you may remember back to when I was um, doing some stranded color work with some mittens and um, you might recall as well that I do struggle with stranded color work. Well, I said I wasn't giving up, but I did take a break, but I'm back to giving it another try because I have seen this um, particular pattern so often and I love this pair of, they're mitts, not mittens, so they, they don't have the end, but um, they are called under wing mitts and I imagine you have seen them as well. A pair pattern by Erica Hauser Designs and you see that lovely moth on there. And I also loved the phases of the moon. Um, as a third grade teacher, I had to teach the phases of the moon every year. It was one of my favorite things to teach, but um, not everyone's, but I, I really liked it. So I, that appealed to me. And of course, you know, I, I love butterflies and uh, Moths, not quite so much, but I, I did like these. So here is, um, I'm on the first mitt, and here is what I have finished. So this, I think, is the beginning of the bottom of the wing right here. And here is the back that has this little design, and the phases of the moon go all the way around. And um, I did, I, I like these. There are uh, more stitches and they're on fingering weight yarn and maybe that's making a difference. I'm feeling more comfortable. I don't know that the finished project will look any better, but I am feeling more comfortable. Um, tension is just still my issue. And um, I think these little circles probably aren't the best thing for working on tension, but it's looking okay. But what I found um, right about, I think here, here, someplace in here. I put them on and they, they were fine and then I put them on and I have kind of a wide hand and they were stretching a little bit so I went from a 1.5 needle up to a 2.0 needle, um, size 2 needle because I thought that would be the best way to not have 
the stretch there is just to try and increase the size. Even though I, the thumb gusset is being formed now, it uh, it's still not enough for the width of my hand. So I hope they'll turn out all right doing that. So I haven't not started the second one, don't have anything done on that. And um, I'll say the yarn, the white color yarn is just some bare yarn. It's the yarn that I dye that's fingering weight. It's an 80-20 merino nylon blend. The black is um, from Frolicking Feet, and it's the leftover black I had from doing my surprise party shawl by Helen Stewart. And um, I'll show you. Here's a the skein. It's not totally black. You can see those few little specks of gray, which I thought, mm, I'm not sure if that'll work with having white as the other color, but I think it's fine. And they do feel like the same base. They may not be, but they have the same sort of twist. So um, those are my underwing mitts, and those are in my little um, bag here from Little Skein in the Big Wool. I always want to say Big Woods. And of course, it's um, Charlotte's Web with salutations and and lovely Charlotte here on this side. And it's a nice little drawstring bag. I really like the way they use this one of these little thingies. I don't know what they're called, but you find them lots of jackets and hoods and backpacks and things. So um, that's a nice way to close up the drawstring bag. You can see my cord popping out there on, on my needle. So um, I'm enjoying that project uh, more so than color work I've done before. So let, let's hope it continues to go well. Um, I have some more works in progress, so let me get the next one. The next thing I'm working on is a shawl called the Soapy Shawl. You can see it here, and it is by Paulina P. Now, the shawl is written in two sizes. The small is more of a scarf. I think that, that this picture is showing that size, and that only takes one skein of yarn. It's a DK weight yarn. Um, I'm doing the shawl size, which will take two skeins of DK weight, and I am using the uh, one of the suggested types of yarn because I had one skein of this, and when I found this pattern, I got a second skein so that I could do the shawl size. And this is Shalimar Yarns. Um, the color is Crayfish, and it's a 75% Merino, 15% Cashmere, 10% Silk. It feels great to knit with this. It's, it's not a solid, it's not even just a, really a tone because you'll see some of this pink, but mostly gray. So I am not very far into the shawl, and um, but it's a lot of fun. Let me see if I can get it out here. That's gotten twisted up. Maybe you can see the, a lot of cabling going on down here and twisted stitches and a border. So what you do is, this is the main body of the shawl. You start at one end and you are doing the um, edging as you go, which is nice rather than, you know, just doing a whole lot of stockinette and then picking up stitches or somehow um, then doing the whole edging at once. You're doing this repeat and then you do some of the body and then you come back and you know, purl back on the other side and then come back and do some more. So I think it's an eight row repeat with a lot of different stitches in there. There's so much variety. I'm not a good memorizer anyway. I could never memorize this, but that's fine. I took the pattern, the, the part that I'm doing and made it bigger on my, on the printer. You know, I have a copy function and I just made it bigger and I've got it on my little um, stand with a magnet where I am and um, that's working really, really great. So this is the, and she does talk about um, how to keep this from rolling after you finish. This is the Sophie Shaw, and I'm not very far along as you can see, but I just decided I would um, do two or three repeats a day on it and um, it'll get done that way. I'm keeping that in a bag that I made uh, just because I thought the colors went well. It's one of my three zipper bags and it's a, one that's a little bit bigger. So the inside, fairly well matches the um, the yarn, so I had to put it in there. Although, I can tell you a story. I, you know, with project bags, I use them. Uh, and I have made a lot and purchased a lot, but um, a lot of times my projects are in Ziploc bags because I don't take them places really a whole lot. But this time I decided I would put everything in a bag because 
shouldn't waste them, right? Paid for them, used them, might as, well, might as well use them instead of just having them sit. So my next project is in, let me get the pattern out so that's not sticking out of the top. This is a bag by Awesome Granny, and if you're a watcher of the podcast, you'll know why I chose this bag with the library shelves. And inside, I love this lining. It's a lot of type. So this is a bag by Awesome Granny, and she includes this little dangly thing and this little place to put your stitch markers, and it's got a, a handle and a nice zipper at the top. So what I am knitting in here is another top. It's, um, I'd call it a tank top. Um, those of you who um, have watched before might remember that I started a purple um, linen cotton blend vest. Didn't like how the yarn was working up in that. I switched to making a little uh, short sleeved uh, pullover and I just was having trouble enjoying myself knitting. So um, I still wanted to make a top. And we do have a cowl going on, which I'll talk about a little bit later, where we are working on things that are old, maybe patterns that you bought a long time ago and you never did anything with, or yarn that you have in your stash that you haven't done anything with. So I, wanted, I was um, actually, if you look behind me and you are an observant person and you've watched before, you might notice that things look different in my stash back there, that I have gone back to putting everything in plastic bags. And that's kind of a tangent. If I remember, I'll get back to it in the end. But long story short, um, with it was all a lot of cleanup and moving stuff around and I found my stack of knitting magazines and just started browsing through them and found, here sits something that I really, really wanted to make and the yarn is sitting over here. Both were purchased in 2015. Let's, well, I guess it's not let's, but I'm gonna make it. So this pattern comes from the Knit Pearl Magazine and it is the Spring Summer 2015 issue. This is um, available as a download or it's available, I think, for way less in the paper copy, but I imagine then there would be shipping if it's a paper copy, they'd have to get it to you. I liked a lot of patterns in, in this particular issue, and this is the one that I really, really liked. Well, first of all, because it's sleeveless, and um, just the, the appearance of it, I think it looks comfortable, and it has a lot of little details. This lace going up here at this wavy um, angle is very attractive, the lace across here, and then I don't know if I can get show a good picture, of the back. Yeah, I can, right here. It almost looks gathered here because of special technique you're gonna do with the stitches. So um, I already had the yarn for this. I've had it for just as long. This is um, Savannah, it's a DK. It's by the Fiber Company and it is in the blue grass colorway which is the, what is pictured here. When I saw it, I just ordered the yarn and I think this yarn is now discontinued. This yarn is a blend and it is 50% wool, 20% cotton, 15% linen, and 15% soy. They come in 50 gram skeins and I, it said I only needed five and that's what I ordered. So where it is a bottom up tank and to get that uh, flowing line, you do some short rows and that's where I am at now. So I have finished, it's gonna be hard to show. I have finished this little cuff around the edge and now I am working on the short rows so that we can then get that uh, meandering look. And so this end is high and this end is lower though it's very hard to show you. I'm enjoying the knit. It's, um, it'll be a lot of stockinette, but there's a whole lot of other stuff going on. So like doing all these short rows and then the lace, then there'll be a section and then there'll be some more lace at the top and you'll do some shaping for the arm. So I'm looking forward to it. What happened was though, um, a little fail for me was I did swatch and um, I should just know when I swatch, it's gonna end up knitting bigger. I would have to do a really big swatch because Something always happens. I It's perfect, and then it's not. So I got all the way through the, the little 
cuff at the bottom and about half an inch farther than that. And it's on just a 24 inch cord, so it's all jammed up. I thought, boy, this just looks so big. Um, so I put it on a long cord and tried it on, and I had about this much off to one side. It doubled. It was just way too big. So I went down a size, even though the size fit my measurement that I had gotten, that's what I wanted. I went down one size, and I went down a needle size. And I do like the look of the fabric I'm getting with the smaller needles. I should probably just always start that way, but then my swatch would look too small because I, I get gauge on a swatch a lot of times, and then I lose it. It always grows bigger. So I'm hoping I don't use too much more yarn. That was another thing I thought, eh, but I definitely go down the smaller needle. So, well, that probably, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that is my next work in progress, and I think that is it for works in progress. I think so. All right, let's move on to, let me check my thing. Let's move on to our children's literature book that has fiber-related content this week. And I did say at the beginning that the episode was in which Annie learns to knit. This is a book called Annie and the Swiss Cheese Scarf. And you might have had something similar to that as one of your first projects. Written by Alana Dacos and illustrated by Nisha Hudson. And you see very sweet little girl, very sweet illustrations. I think this is a good marriage of author and illustrator. Now you may have heard of Alana Dacos. I um, first learned of her through her audio podcast that she doesn't have anymore. And I didn't know that when I first started listening to it. I was looking, it was a recommended on iTunes um, when I uh, searched just knitting podcast. And um, what I typically do is listen to a recent one. And then um, if I like it, I'll go back and just start from the beginning and listen to all of them. Well, I don't know if I did that or not, but I started listening and I loved this podcast. She has a wonderful jingle. You can still go back and listen to them, so um, that's why I'll talk a little, little bit about it. She has a really, really funny, cute jingle that went along with her Never Not Knitting. You may know her as Never Not Knitting. And she writes patterns. I have knit one of her patterns. I will show it to you here. I can't show it to you because I made it as a gift for a friend, but I do have some yarn that I think I can remake this, so I might do that at some point. It's very quick, very easy, and um, a, an attractive little cowl with that buttons around. Nice for just getting right up underneath your coat and like wearing a scarf, but not having all those dangly bits, you know, underneath your coat. So I really like that pattern. Um, so I loved her. Um, podcast and I love that pattern that I've done and um, I have browsed online through a book on um, I think one of her books is available on Amazon someplace I browsed through it and um, there's a couple patterns in there I'd like to make as well well then she wrote a book and it was for children and it was about knitting so I had to have it and it is a very sweet story about Annie whose mother does a lot of knitting while she's busy doing other things. And she loves that her mother knits. She's so proud of all of the little things that, that she gets handmade, from stuffies to little sweaters, and she decides she wants to learn to knit. But if you will look at the illustrations there, you might notice some unhappiness going on there in her expression and her mother says learning to knit takes patience and a lot of practice well she sort of gives it up and then one day at school I'm not going to tell the whole story um, the teacher tells them they all need to come in each student needs to come in and show something that they're best at and she realizes she's not the best at a lot of things um, isn't feeling confident about a lot of things and, or that someone else, that something she may feel good about doing someone else in her classroom does better. So she thinks they will show that. So she remembers, um, I guess she kind of throws some things around and sees the scarf that she had abandoned and thinks, well, maybe I could. So she really works at it and ends up with her scarf. And everyone loves it. Now the little guy at the end loves the holes and she doesn't tell him those were mistakes. Of course, they were design features. And um, 
at the oh another thing that this book does is it teaches that little rhyme about um, in through the front door around the back um, peek out the window off jumps Jack that is in here and she then teaches her friends and tells them the same thing that her mother told her about needing patience and practice and then at the very end of the book they do demonstrate with instructions on how to knit. So this is a great little book for learning to knit and maybe providing some confidence. And there you see Alana Dacos knitting with her daughter. So this book, Annie and the Swiss Cheese Scarf, is our children's literature book for today. That book by Alana Dacos is a very good lead-in to the next thing that I want to share with you, which is the sewing project. Now, Alana Dacos has her own knitting store out in California, and she has, although she's never not knitting, she also likes to sew, and she has come up with some sewing patterns. And the other day on Instagram, I saw that they had some patterns with little kits to them to make this take-along tote. Now, by the time I saw it, I'm really getting mad at Instagram because you see these notifications sort of late. Um, and I, if you have notifications turned on for every person you like, your, your device is going to be binging all day. So um, I did not see it until um, there were very few left, but I was so thrilled because the fabric that I liked, it was available in the small tote. I might have done the large, but now that I've made it, I'm glad I, it ended up being the small tote. Sometimes things just work out right. So it's called a take-along tote, and this is the sewing pattern. Well, the pattern is in pie is piece patterns, and these are the instructions. I have never had a more beautifully done pattern. Just every detail, and I can't show you much of it because each page has part of the uh, directions, but I'll just show you this page. Look at these little details and the quality of the paper. It's it's just gorgeous. This was a fabric that was uh, no longer available as a kit. But if you like that fab fabric, I have seen that for sale other places, so maybe you can still get it from someplace. But I ordered mine, and it came beautifully boxed. It came quickly. Communication was excellent from the company. It was all wrapped in um, this beautiful brown tissue with um, a string around it and just everything labeled so beautifully um, she's never not knitting but sometimes sewing and so there's the little tag that was on here let me show you her card and I will of course put links to this so I ordered it and um, it came on Friday and on Sunday I said I'm making that so I I made it on Sunday and here is my little take along tote isn't it beautiful? This is a Rifle Paper Company fabric for the exterior. The inside has a little pocket. And I didn't realize this when I got the pattern, but they also talk about um, putting in a grommet. And I thought, I couldn't see in the picture, so I didn't know, hmm, what's the grommet for? But what I decided to use it for, you know, it could have been as a yarn guide, I guess. But I decided I would put my scissors, just tie them to a ribbon, and have a you know long enough ribbon that I can reach my project and then at the other end I sewed a button so I put it through the grommet and then sew the button on so this button stops this from coming through now if I want to change the scissors I can untie it I could even have um, sewn this together to keep it on there permanently and then if I change my mind I guess I could have um, taken the button off at this end or just cut the ribbon and done another piece. I think it's very flexible, but I, I like having my scissors in a pocket, so that is just perfect. I love this little tote. I think it is adorable, and it took me maybe two and a half hours. Everything came with it, the interfacing, the little bit of fiber fill you need, the straps. The grommets did not come, that was optional. There was one other optional part, and that was right here to sew a little loop of ribbon. And I did it, and then it was the same color ribbon as this, and really, I'm gonna change this ribbon because I thought, well, it sort of was like this, 
but that's not a predominant color. So I'm going to get a different color ribbon anyway. But the ribbon kind of showed I didn't like it. And I thought, what is the ribbon for? Is it to be a yarn guide? Um, I thought at first maybe were you going to put a little button here and you could... But I don't know what the ribbon was for. But the tote can go right over your arm and your yarn can come right out through the sides. So what a perfect little tote. So I highly recommend the pattern if you can just get the pattern and use your own fabrics. Um, if you have a non-directional print, I think the front fabric only needs a fat quarter. So, um, and then of course lining too. So maybe two fat quarters you could get it out of for the small one. Can't beat that. And she gave a generous amount of fabric because I have this left over. And I guess I dropped the lining fabric because there was a little leftover lining fabric too. Not as much as this, but... Um, so that, that um, is another product from Alana Dacos, um, and um, if you like to sew, might be something you'd like to sew too. All right, let's move on to some giveaways and talk about our make-alongs. Um, the first one I actually should have announced the last time. I had already pulled it, and it was on a piece of paper on my table, and something got set down on it, and I missed it. So. Um, I, I apologize for this one taking so long. And this is for a pattern that was offered by Katrina's Creations. And um, it was my bookmobile question. And I loved reading all of your responses to that question. Some people never had the uh, availability of a bookmobile. Other people still have the availability of a bookmobile. And I find them so charming and they're very nostalgic for me. And we don't have one here either. But um, that question I enjoyed, and our winner was um, Debbie, D-E-B-B-Y, G, letter G, T-O-O. -O. I'll put that down here. So Debbie, you probably don't even need to get in touch with me because I will get in touch with the designer and have her um, gift this to you through your Ravelry library, but do check that out. And thank you so much for participating and um, responding to the prompt. The next thing I want to do is draw for the socks. It's been a while since I was here, as I promised it would be. Um, but frankly, I'm lucky to be here today because my grandson is here. I normally, uh, Monday is a preschool day for him. I record in the morning. He woke up with a fever this morning, so of course we did not send him to school, even though he's, he seems fine, or did all morning seem fine. But he is napping now, and um, I hope I don't get interrupted. I'm rushing just a bit because I want to be sure and finish this up. But, um, and I also hope that I'm being loud enough. So anyway, since it's been so long, I'm going to do another drawing from our sock um, finished object thread. And, you know, that works all the time. Just keep knitting socks. Keep adding them to the um, finished object thread. Add them to the chatter thread too because people do like to ask you questions or make comments to you and you can't do that in the finished object thread. So if you'll just put them in both it would be lovely if you don't mind. But our uh, we started with number 533 and um, today I um, went in and the most recent post at the time that I did it right before the podcast was 636. So we'll start with 637 next time. And our winner was number 616, Knit Janie, K-N-I-T-J-A-N-I. -N -N -I, and she lives in Canada. So what I'm sending you, um, Knit Janie, if you will send me a private message in Ravelry and let me know your mailing address and your full name, is this skein of Lorna's Laces Shepherd Sock Yarn. It is an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. And I made a pair of socks from this exact skein. What happened was I purchased two of them. I was doing a knit along with the Jimmy Beans Wool Company and they were they sponsored, and this was the sponsored yarn. This is, the colorway is called Craig Nadoon. It was an Outlander colorway. And um, they had an Outlander knit along. It was my very first knit along, my very first shawl. And I started it with this and I wasn't pleased because it had a lot of cables through it and I just felt like the variegated was hiding the cable. So I had some other yarn that I used and I was much happier using that. But since I had it, I made a pair of socks and I gave them to a friend. I'll put a picture here. So that, that's how these knit up, at least at the gauge that um, I had. And it's been a long time, so I don't remember. This is from March 2015. But it's a beautiful skein of sock yarn with grays and purples and blues. And um, congratulations, Knit Janie. Get a hold of me, and I'll send this right out to you. 
And our next winner is from our Knitty by Nature um, give, giveaway, which Knitty by Nature sent this set of stitch markers and progress keepers and this one. And so both of these will go to a lucky winner. And this was from a thread in the Ravelry group where I asked you to visit her shop and then tell me what particular thing you liked the best from there. And our winner was number... It, oh, it was went from numbers 2 through 54, and the winner was 35, which is MSOL2. And she lives in Boca Raton, Florida, where I, a good friend of mine, a decorator, lives in Boca Raton. And she liked best the wizard shawl pin. Well, when she said that, I thought, I don't remember a wizard shawl pin. And so I went on her site and it is beautiful, but you are going to, if you will just private message me on Ravelry, I will send these out to you in, uh, down in Boca Raton. So thank you. Those are our prizes. And now let's talk a little bit about our knit-alongs or our make-alongs. So we have the shawl along, and I just finally, the other day, I'm sorry, I'm so slow, I finally put a finished object thread because we have lots of people chattering and making beautiful shawls and showing your progress, which is so encouraging and um, also enabling and giving lots of ideas for new shawls. And um, so if you want to, or making a shawl, you want to um, put yours over there, Feel free to join in on the chatter thread, um, and your, if you get your finished object thread, finished object done. I don't remember right now the deadline, so um, whatever it is, if it's tomorrow, I'm going to make it another month because please keep knitting, please keep adding your shawls. I even thought, as I'm a person who knits a lot of socks and a lot of shawls, that this is another one we could just leave open and then um, you know do a drawing and um, at a certain time and then start from the next number for the next time. So if anybody thinks that's a good idea, would like to keep a shawl um, thread open, I can certainly do that. I, I then would just maybe pick like every two months to draw from any finished shawls that are there. And um, we also have the oldies um, knit along which is or make along which is where um you use some old stash yarn old pattern that you have that you've wanted to do maybe an old project you started that you sat aside for whatever reason and you're now getting back to it um that those are all things that you can enter and i have not made the finished object thread for that and i will do that while i'm editing the podcast and getting it uploaded i will get that finished object thread in there and also take a look at when the the drawing's supposed to be, but I'm all for, you know, the more in there, the merrier. I always forget to talk about that shawl back there on the mannequin, so I want to uh, mention what this is. It's not really a shawl. It's more of a scarf, although you certainly could make it larger. You just keep going. It's one of those boomerang shapes, so whatever yarn you have, when you're running out, you finish it off and you're done. This one is one of my favorite knitted things that I've made for myself. I've worn it probably more than um, almost anything else that I have made. And I think that's because it's not too warm. And um, I just love the colors. It's called Radiant Gradient. And then they have in parentheses Boomerang. Maybe just because that's one of the shapes. It's by Stitch Nerds Designs, which is Susan Ashcroft. And I love this pattern. Give you a look here of someone else's. Just see how you're using a gradient, but they're, the colors are crisscrossing. What I used was a Dunn Roving gradient skein. And it, this was one skein. And what I did was I knit with, it, it's a two, you're using two colors and there's a lot of slip stitches. I pulled from the center for one of my colors and then I pulled from the outside for the other color. So if I was to start this one, it would start with a blue and a gray. And then as each color changes, the way that this crisscross pattern is in there changes as well. It is very clever. Um, I have two skeins of this and I have thought of making a large one using those two skeins and finding a way to make the colors, you know, maybe start, I don't know. Uh, why do I talk? Anyway, I do have a project page and it does show that this shawl all laid out. Uh, maybe I can get a picture in here, maybe not, because um, it is on my project page. But um, I really, really like this little shawlette or scarf. Radiant Gradient.
And now it's time to talk about what I'm grateful for. This is the uh, my word of the year, gratitude or gratefulness. And today, um, well, I will first mention last podcast, I was grateful for the rain and thank you. It can slow up a bit. Hasn't stopped, I think, since then raining. It's raining right now. So we've had quite a bit of rain, but everything is a lovely green um, and that is delightful. I have several things to be grateful for today, but I'm going to put it as a category is that I'm grateful for Ravelry being there because it has um, opened up so much for me in my life and I know so much for so many other people and particularly in the realm of um, virtual friendships and virtual um, acquaintances. So the first one I want to talk to you about is Catherine from Crafternoon Treats. Here is her card and Catherine has a podcast. Her podcast she does knit but she primarily crochets. She is in the UK and she um, dyes yarn and makes knitting jewelry, stitch markers, progress keepers, uh, zipper pulls, and sells them through an Etsy shop. And I, of course, will link all that information, but also put it down here on the screen and again, show you her card. She is very special. And I suggest if you are a fan of natural wools, that you check out her shop because she has uh, not only dyes beautiful yarn, she's also done excellent um, podcast, a video podcast about um, natural dyeing and showing how she did it and, and really um, comparing the, the different results and uh, what she's done. And I was absolutely fascinated with that uh, aspect of natural dyeing and watching someone do so many different um, types of natural dyeing and I know that took a lot of her time. So if you have any interest in natural dyeing, you may also want to check that out. But in her, um, what what happened is I, I actually watched her podcast and she watched my podcast and of course we didn't know each other. But she reached out to me and wondered if I would like to do a swap with her. And she said that she would dye some yarn for me or I could just choose something from her shop. And this was right before I did the hydrangea bag projects. And um, I needed to make, um, so I was gonna make a bag for her. I needed to make one and I was going for a larger bag. So I was uh, working through some patterns and I thought to myself, I will take um, some fabric and make her a hydrangea bag. And she had also mentioned to me that hydrangeas were very special to her. They um, when her mother passed away, um, they were in bloom and they had them um, at her service. And I thought that was um, very lovely, so I thought it would have a meaning for her. But I did ask her, what do you like in a bag? Because I'm custom making something, so whatever she likes. And, and so I made a very different kind of bag. Um, I made a pocket that had little slots in it for crochet hooks. And she wanted more, the more zippers the better. So in addition to that, on one side of the inside, there was a zipper in my outside zipper. And um, it was a little bit larger because she said bigger is better for her. I was limited by my fabric constraints in how big I could make it. But um, because at that point, I was working off of uh, small amounts that I a fabric that I had ordered. And when I just that making that bag out of that fabric made me decide that was the fabric that I would do all of them in. So she was going to look at that fabric and dye some yarn for me, which she did, and I want to show it to you. She sent me two skeins, which I never expected. I, I would never have, have asked for. I just, one would have, it was more, more, more than enough. But she sent me two. And look at the colors. Are those, is it just beautiful? This is called South Atlantic Silky. That's what her, um, that's her base name. It is 75% British Falkland Fine Merino, 25% Mulberry Silk. So you can imagine how soft it is. It is a fingering weight, but you can see it's very plump and it has that twist, which is my favorite twist. The colorway is called Midnight Sun. And I just think this is beautiful. So I have to plan something very, very special to make with this yarn. And um, I will be doing that. Um, 
as you know, with the yarn I dyed, I made a, a shawl, and this may turn into something too um, along those lines. But that isn't where she stopped. That was that was the swap, and she, but she was so generous and sent me so many more things, and I am gonna share just a little bit of them with you guys. I'm not trying to be greedy, but um, first is this yarn right here, this lovely lace weight yarn. This is a very special, special colorway. She works with a mill to dye yarn for her to her specifications because she's really trying to keep British breeds alive and use naturally occurring things as you can tell with the natural dyeing. This is called Fabulous Four, that's the base. It is 25% Masham, 25% Romney, 25% British Alpaca, and 25% Blue Face Leicester. It is the Fabulous Four base. It is 100 grams, but about 700 yards. I think she said she was being really generous with that. It's probably more. It is non-superwash, and the color is called Forbidden Fruit. When I saw this, I thought this has to, I have never knit with lace. I have two skeins of lace weight, but I've never ventured, even though I had projects for them, I haven't done them yet because it was lace weight, but I feel more confident now. And I absolutely want to take this beautiful gift and make it into something. So I'm not 100% on this, but I did see this shawl and I thought that might be really, really good. It's called Timeless. And you'll see it is a beaded shawl with lace weight and I think it's so delicate and lovely that I think I'm going to use this colorway to make this timeless shawl and I it says it's lavishly beaded this is um, a boo knits pattern and she I've never knit one of her patterns but I've heard lots of good things about them and they that they have lots of beads and I love to bead so I'm gonna think about what color beads um, for this I might just go with a clear bead that maybe has a silver lining on the inside to make it sparkle a little bit more. I'm not positive, um, but, oh, Catherine, that's just beautiful. And then she sent me, on that same base, the Fabulous Four base, this little set of mini skates. Each one's about 40 yards. It's fingering weight yarn, so this was um, lace weight, and this is a fingering weight. And it's a set of five assorted mini skeins. So I'm gonna make this a prize, along with one other little prize here. She makes beautiful yarn jewelry. Now these are stitch markers or progress keepers. And one says right side, one says wrong side. I love that. I always need that right side for sure. This set, knit two together in SSK. So handy to know which one you're gonna do on which side. Make one left, make one right. Are those gorgeous? Look, they're beaded and then they have the little beads with the numbering and lettering on them. So this right here, these three, and this yarn is going to be a prize. And if you are interested in this giveaway, I'm going to make a thread in Ravelry that says Crafternoon Treats. If you will go to the Crafternoon Treats um, Etsy shop and take a look at what she has and respond in there to something that um, you particularly liked, then um, that will be your entry. And then the next podcast, I will draw for a winner of those things. And then she also sent me this, um, these larger, that you know, more like jewelry, but they have the lobster claw. So I'm going to create some bags that these are the zipper pulls on. And I have some fabric for at least one of them to make right now. Now, finally from Catherine, I ordered something from her because her yarn is just beautiful. And this is the skein that I ordered. And this is called Rhapsody. And those purples are just I think it's showing pretty true to life right there. Let me just pull this off so you can get a little bit better look. Is that beautiful? So I don't know if she has any more of this in, in her shop. This is um, Polworth, 85% Polworth, 15% nylon, and I have never knit with Polworth, and I've wanted to. So this is um, something that I'm gonna find a special project. It seems too pretty to make socks, but then it seems like it would make gorgeous socks, so um, that little bit of nylon in there might be helpful. So I'm um, very thankful to you, Catherine, but she isn't the only one I'm thankful for. 
Um, I have a viewer who quite a while ago um, had written to me and said, could she have my address? She wanted to send me a gift. And I just thought, oh, you can't make me something. I mean, I haven't done anything. And I just was blown away by that. But she um, has worked on it for quite a while, and it just came last week, which was kind of out of the blue. And isn't that fun when something's just, you know, kind of forgotten about it? Even when you order stuff, if it takes a long time, you've kind of forgotten it shows up. It's just so fun, kind of like, you know, it's your birthday. And um, this is M, Emma, and she is um, Red M36 on Ravelry, and she has just started her own podcast. I think she's got four episodes now, and it's called M's Craft and Chat. And um, I've watched one and a half of her episodes, and I will watch the rest as uh, next time I sit down to knit, I'll turn another uh, this second half of her second episode on. And um, after seeing her, then I felt like we'd met because. You see me, but I don't see you. So um, you might feel more like you know me, but I, I wouldn't know you if I passed by you, if I haven't met you. And now I feel like I do know M. And so it was so very sweet of her. She knits and crochets. She loves to knit socks. She loves to knit gifts and crochet gifts. She loves to make gifts for people. And so um, a person after my own heart. And she chose colors that she knows I love. I love pinks. I love green. I love purple. I, I actually, I love it. I like every color. It is this lovely crocheted. I, I call it a wrap because it's rectangular, so it's rectangular in shape, and it's very long, so it'll go around me and be very warm, and just the most beautiful stitch. I don't know crochet, crochet stitches, and when you see, read patterns, I get really confused with them, just as I did with knitting patterns at first, so I don't know what crochets these are, but I just thought that was so interesting the way that they connected and then left these big airy spaces. So thank you so much, um, Em. I appreciate you giving of your work, your time, your yarn um, to send this to me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So I'm thankful for that. And then we have more. I had a table full today. Some stuff is in a basket on the floor here and another basket on the floor here. So my next thing was in a basket down there. And this is from another viewer. Her name is Susie, and I won't, um, I won't uh, give out any more information. because I'm not sure that if, um, if she wants me to or not. But she had gone into a craft thrift store. I've never heard of a craft thrift shore, store. It's a good thing because I'd probably be really in trouble there. But she found this fabric and thought of me because it is about books and reading and school read and I can't wait to make some project bags out of that. If I was still teaching in my library, I had a, a glass window between the office and the um, the library itself and I would have, I had curtains over it. I would have made curtains out of this for that window if I was still there. Um, it just looked so perfect for that. Thank you so much, Susie. That was so sweet to see something. And she did ask first, you know, if, um, because I'm, she didn't, she said if, if that was okay and I, I would like the fabric that she would um, go and get it. And I hated for her to, um, to purchase it, but it was just so nice. And I, you know, can't resist fabric just like you can't resist yarn, right? So thank you so much. So uh, that's so far three people that are all through the podcast. And so is the fourth person. And the fourth person is Linda. And Linda works at one of my local yarn shops, Needles in the Haymarket. And um, I went in there to get some yarn, which I'm going to show you in a minute, um, a couple of weekends ago. And my husband comes along with me. He's my driver, and he, he's happy to drive me places. But he doesn't usually come in yarn shops. He sits in the car with his... Kindle and reads or you know goes off to another store if there's something close by but there is nothing close by there so um, it had started to rain as I mentioned lots of rain and he um, brought my umbrella into me so that I could get back out to the car with it and as she I had seen her when I walked in I had looked around I was waiting in line to be waited on it wasn't a long line there was somebody in front of me though and I'm standing there when my in this short line when my husband came in with my umbrella and I guess when I spoke to him 
because the voice is sometimes more recognizable to people than even the visual. The auditory might is stronger for some people than visual. And she she recognized me and I've never been recognized before. So I was so excited. That was, I mean, she made my day, absolutely made my day. It was so thrilling. And um, so I, of course, you know, I, that is one of my shops. I will be back there anyway, but I'll look forward to seeing Linda there again. And um, so she's on Ravelry as well and Instagram. And so it's so nice to make these connections. And I'm, I'm grateful to Ravelry and YouTube for providing this opportunity for us to meet from around the world. Both M and Catherine are from the UK. So that's a long way from here. Um, Linda's right here in my local area. And um, Susie is from, um, I, I think New York, but you know, East Coast. And so she's close by, but not close by. So it's so funny that you can um, find people from all over the world and never having uh, even met can become friends. So I am grateful for that. I also wanted to um, give a shout out to a podcast, which is the Three Ply Podcast. This is a podcast that I had started watching like three or four episodes ago. It was in my recommended and I watched it. And I really enjoyed the ladies. And they are, um, gosh, what can Angie, Irene, and Joyce. Angie, Irene, and Joyce. I also want to give a shout out to a podcast, and that is the Three Ply Podcast with Angie, Irene, and Joyce. And I had started watching them about three or four podcasts ago um, in their podcast. And um, I haven't gone back and done the marathon with them. I just hadn't had a chance, but um, I watched about four episodes ago. I watched one. It was in my feed as recommended, and I subscribed, and I watched each one as they come up. And I really enjoy these ladies. They're funny and... Um, it's, it seems kind of fun to have three people there um, helping one another along in the podcast. Well, they um, live a little bit north of Chicago, um, so they're in Illinois, and they wanted to create a podcast from Illinois because there aren't too many from that area, and um, they go to one, their local knit shop, which is um, Knitworks. I believe, or Elgin Networks. They live in Elgin, I think, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, but they mentioned me on their podcast, and that was so exciting. It was, it was just such a shock, and it was so thrilling, and I appreciate it, and I love their podcast, too. So I've already mentioned to you about M's Craft and Chat, and now 3ply Podcast. I'll put all these links below. So, um, you know, we have to, when we see something we like, it's nice to pass that on to other people and um, let them know because I'm always on the lookout for something new and, and something um, that might appeal to me. So thank you so much, ladies. And I also, on that note, I, not that they're related totally, but it just reminded me, I want to let you all know that I am going to be, I think, doing a name change. I've been thinking about this for quite a while, not the podcast, but... Um, the other day I was um, corresponding back and forth with, with on um, Instagram, Indigo Chicken Dolls, because I, I was I had ordered something from her and I, we were just commenting back and forth. And she didn't realize who I was because my Instagram name has no connection to the podcast. I originally started on Instagram for only one reason. I didn't even, I'd heard of it, of course, but I didn't know what it was, didn't know anybody else who used it. But um, when I started um, doing the shawls from the Shawl Society, Helen Stewart said, oh, you know, I sometimes give a little sneak peek of the upcoming shawls on Instagram. So I sub went on Instagram, created an account, subscribed, just, just followed her so that I could see these sneak peeks. But it's become more and more to me now, and I, 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 it's, it's an enabling place, really, for, for yarns and things, gets me in some trouble. But... When I opened the account, I really didn't think there were, I was going to do anything with it other than following this one person. And that's, it's grown into more than that for me. But when I did, I just took my email because, frankly, I can't remember anything. I can't remember passwords. I can't remember anything. So if I just make it, you know, a lot of times your email is your username. So I just did the first part of our email. And no one knows what that was. And, and in fact, it's not even my initial. It's my husband. So, um... I'm thinking of changing my Instagram to In a Pickle Knitting. 
And I'm also thinking on Ravelry, it's the exact same thing. When I started in Ravelry, I had no idea what it was going to be to me. I saw a pattern at Yarn Cloud, one of my local knit shops, yarn shops, and this um, person working there was knitting up this sock and I was just, I'd only done vanilla and I thought, oh, that is so cool. And she goes, oh, just pat it on Ravelry. Here's what it is. And I'm, what's Ravelry? I didn't know. So she told me what it was. So again, I went onto it thinking, I'm going to get this pattern. And that's really going to be it. So again, I picked something easy. And that was my school email, beginning of my school email. So I, that's why it's C-L-A-U-S-S-D-K. That was given to me and I knew I could remember it. But I think I'm going to want to change that to in a pickle knitting too or just in a pickle. So if you see a name change come up, that's what it's about. I just thought those two things um, are both related. Oh, YouTube, the podcast on YouTube, Instagram, and my Ravelry are all related for me. So I feel like the name should be related as well. I hope it doesn't cause any kind of snafus. I've tried to read about it. It doesn't seem like it's going to. And I hope it doesn't. If it does, I'll try and go back to what I was. But um, I did want to let you all know that. If you saw all of a sudden, what is this, um, that you would know what I had done. And let me see what else did. Oh, I know what it was. When I was showing the mitts that I'm working on, I wanted to tell you that um, what got me excited, go ahead and do it now, you know, because I bought the pattern a while back, but I just hadn't decided to do the color work right at that time. But I watch um, two podcasts, Treehouse Knits with Rachel, I think, and Earth Tones Girl is Denise. And I watch their podcast, and they are together doing a summer mitten along. And um, so I I'm, I'm thought, okay, then I'm going to go ahead and, and do these because I want to do them, and this just gives me that little bit of a push. So I wanted you to know, if you do mittens, um, or interested to check first of all check out both her podcasts they're great podcasts and uh, Denise did a tutorial on uh, color work mittens knitting um I think she uses two circular needles in her method I'm pretty sure that's what she was showing was her method so um, why don't you to know about that with treehouse knits and I'm looking here at my board it looks like I did everything and I hope that I did and um, thank you so much for tuning in. If you've made it this far, I appreciate that. And if you were new today, I hope you enjoyed the podcast and please subscribe. And um, if you liked it, hit, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, find another podcast. I, there's lots of them out there. So um, I hope you find one that you like. And um, I hope that you all are enjoying all the projects that you're working on and have a great next couple of weeks when I'll see you again. Bye-bye.